Hello. Hello, Vinny. Hi there. Vinny. <laughs> Hello. I've got some big news. I've joined a dating app. <laughs> you are in the game now, yeah? And we are going to find you the right girl. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the fan carpet. All right, so it's an, it's an incredible pleasure to speak to you today. Um, I watched the film, the first, well, played it. Is it play or yeah. watch? I, yeah. It's, yeah. One of, it's one of those weird hybrid things now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and my f the first outcome, I actually got, um, uh, Vinny ended up with Grace. In the first oh, really? Outcome. Oh, that's yeah. good. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. uh, second time round, um, I, I, second time round was Saffron. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just playing through because I want to um, unlock everything because there, yeah. like there are 10 outcomes. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to unlock everything, so well, I, I will. Um, it's I'm not much of a gamer, but I, I like the I like the hybrid nature of this, where yeah. it's a bit of both. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was yeah, it's good. So I liked it a lot. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's very good. Yeah. All right. So um, if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you to get into the film industry? Um. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I always knew I'd be in entertainment somehow. I kind of just had a feeling. I think I was always wanting to make people laugh and I was singing to, you know, singing to my sister would get all of her older friends to listen to me while I would sing like Christina Aguilera. So I didn't know what I would do. I just knew I would probably be in the entertainment industry. And then as I got older, I just wasn't sure if it was going to be a feasible option for me. I was like, how do I actually get into the industry? And my dad was like, well, I'm in it. So why don't you audition for Vikings? And I was like, he was like, if you're bad, you know, then we can forget this ever happened and you can go back to, you know, whatever you're going to do. But if you're decent, we'll give you a little extra role and you can see if you like it. And then if you do, you can go to drama school or whatever, you know. So really that was all it was meant to be was like a little extra role to see if I enjoyed the industry. So I had to audition. And I got, I guess I, I wasn't too bad. So I got uh, a role, but Torvi started as like a glorified extra. Like she just had a few scenes and then it became something bigger. So that's kind of how it, it started. But I don't think unless my dad had given me that chance, I would have really known where to begin because it's very intimidating. I mean, also drama schools cost an awful lot of money. So not everyone has that opportunity. So I think I was sort of, wasn't sure how to sort of enter into it. Mm. But that's really where it all began. Great. I suppose it also helps that you've got like um, your sisters in the industry as well. So that uh, having that as well kind of helps, mm. I suppose. Yeah. Great. So what? Were, so obviously, five dates is very different to Viking. So yeah. what enticed you to get involved? Um, I've w worked with Paul before. He. Uh, was the director and writer we did a, a pilot together for another interactive thing so I trusted his vision I, I knew how he worked so I was like okay this is good promising and I'm always up for a new you know character and to explore something else and Grace was kind of gritty and a bit she kind of had a badass flair about her and I was kind of excited by it all so I was like a hundred percent in straight away I read the script and I was like yeah for sure and you can't really imagine how it's I mean I still haven't played it so I still don't know really how it looks I can't really imagine but I think that's what kind of drew me into it was like I don't know how this is going to end up or what it's going to look like so I'm just going to give it a go it's something new you know it's, it's so different to going to set every day and being able to watch your playbacks and you know you know how it's going to look because that's the scene you're filming it had a different dimension to it and that Kind of really intrigued me. The other thing that you worked on with Paul was that the machine? No, it was that no. we can't. I signed loads of NDAs for it, so I'm not allowed to say what it was. But no hopefully, worries. one day people <laughs> will see it. But that was actually so cool. That other project we did. So I knew, I kind of knew how he worked. I knew he was so interested in this kind of part of you know film and tv and so his his interest kind of piqued my interest and i was like well i want to delve into this world a bit more so i've now done two interactive things when most actors haven't done any so i feel like i'm sort of ahead of ahead of the game in a way 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, how do you relate to Grace? I would actually say I'm, we're quite similar. Like, obviously, she's a lawyer. She's probably, she's book smart, you know, which I'm not necessarily street smart, that's what my mum says. <laughs> but um, she knows exactly what she wants. She just doesn't take any crap from anyone. And that is very much like myself. And she's just such a straight talker. Um, and a lot of people I know in my life, I tell them, I, t I, I know what I want and people can find that really intimidating and very full on. And I feel like Grace has that same thing. She doesn't really care about the effect she has. She just has to say what it is that she wants and she won't take the kind of no for an answer. So I really admire that. And that is how I try to be in everyday life. However, I think she could prop, I'm definitely a bit more sort of fun loving she's a bit more serious, but I think there are sides of her that are very kind and, and a bit wild and a bit fun. I liked that she had all those different kind of aspects to her personality. So there are certainly things I related to. And I think as an actor, every character you get as different as they are from you, you have to find something in there that you can understand or relate to, or else you can't really give such an honest performance. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so obviously Five Dates is quite unique in the sense that you had to be your own DP, uh, your own makeup yeah. artist, your own camera yeah. up, your own yeah. everything. So how did you find that challenging experience? Um, I have to say I loved getting familiar with all that kind of behind the scenes stuff. Um, I'm so bad with technology, like famously can't print anything myself. Don't know how to like, to, you know, work a computer. Like I'm so bad. I get it from my dad, I think. Um, and so my biggest worry really was the technical side. Like I was panicked. I wouldn't turn the microphone on. I was panicked. I wouldn't turn the camera on, which to some people probably sounds really silly. But to me, I was like, I'm wait I don't want to waste people's time. I don't want them to get the, the, you know, send it in the post, the sound thing. I don't have any sound, like I never press play. Like that was what I was really worried about. So that for me was kind of the biggest struggle, but I really enjoyed, you know, they sent all the costume and I really enjoyed doing my own checks. You know, I would literally shout like checks and I'd do my own <laughs> bit of something, something, which I don't know if any of the other actors did, but to me, like filming is all of that. It's like checking the lights, checking the makeup, so I tried to kind of create that for myself as much as I could, even if it wasn't always necessary. Mm. Um, I, I kind of wanted to create as much of a real film set vibe to get me into it as I could. And I actually really enjoyed it. And working from home, I mean, it was a luxury. I got to use my own toilet and go to bed and wake up in my house where I was filming. You know, I didn't have to wake up at 3 a.m. to get my hair and makeup done. Mm. So I'm glad, I mean, I'll probably never experience something like that again, but I'm so glad I, I got to be part of this small group of people that actually got to film in the middle of lockdown doing it all myself. Mm. Um, has, that, uh, uh, has that sparked an interest in you to uh, go behind the scenes as a, as a career path? <sighs> like later on down the line? Yeah, Not right now, but... yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely don't have the writing thing. Like I wish I had a bit more of a bug for it. And I don't know if that will come with time, it might do. And I certainly could see myself maybe wanting to direct at some stage, but I just can't, right now maybe it's just that I love being in front of the camera. Um, I would say the mo the thing that I would be interested in doing would be like the makeup side of things. Like I'm always curious watching the prosthetics and all that kind of stuff that does that does make like intrigue me and make me think, oh, that would be quite fun to delve into. But in terms of, in terms of the directing and writing, producing aspect, you know, maybe it'll come with time, but for now I'm so kind of hooked on the adrenaline of, of being in front of camera that I can't really think about it, but who knows, ask me in a few years and I might have changed my mind. You never know. Cool. Yeah, well, that that's the thing with this industry. It's it's constantly evolving and constantly like constantly given new challenges. It's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so obviously this is a comedy. Um, so do you have any preferred genres and any favourite films? Well, I always 
fantasized about doing comedy. Obviously I did Vikings for six years and everyone knew me as a kind of like stern shield maiden who cried a lot and had a lot of kids and stuff like that. So, which is great. But I have so many other sides to me that I would love to, you know, be able to show. So the fact that this had, and the thing is, Grace isn't very funny. Like she's quite sort of serious. I would say that's probably a big difference between me and her is I make a lot more jokes. I'm a lot more lighthearted. But I love the idea that it all, a rom-com, like I would love to do something like that. It's just so different and it just shows such a different side of me that I'm not always like wielding an ax and, you know, looking very sort of stern. I also have that sort of softer side. So I love that that was, you know, there was a bit of a bit of a change in, in, in that, this script, but um, I also love horror. So, and I, I wouldn't mind, I mean, I've done a horror movie before, but I wouldn't mind doing a sort of really, something really freaky. I mean, I can't, I can barely watch them, but to be in them, it's a different feeling. So, but I would say comedy, I, I, I just, I would love to explore that a bit more. Mm. Great. Um, yeah. Um, it, it, so what uh, do you, do you find the, um, uh, with horror, with horror, especially, do you find the, uh, the, ma the, uh, the movie magic is kind of broken when you know how it's done? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you have to stop and start and do something a million times. So you might go on to set and do a rehearsal and be a bit like freaked out for a second but really you know how it's going to end and stuff so when you watch it you don't have that same sort of <gasps> that shock factor which mm. is so much of watching a horror movie is that the, the jumps and the suspense and i think that makes it kind of bearable like if you're scared of horror movies you could probably act in one because i used to think as a kid i'd be like i'm so scared of horror movies like i don't think i could ever be in one and then as i grew up i sort of fell in love with um with thrillers and like Hitchcock and stuff like that and Psycho and all that, those kind of movies. And then as I got older, I got offered uh, a movie called Ravers, which was like a horror comedy kind of thing. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is my chance to, to see what it's like. So yeah, definitely that kind of illusion of horror is broken when you're performing in it, but it's still, I mean, there are still moments where you get scared. I mean, you can't avoid that. If I remember rightly, Ravers was at Frightfest a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think the reception was pr was pretty good. Um, yeah, it so was. I, I haven't seen it, so. Um, yeah. It was it was well received. That's awesome. Um, so, um, are there any genres that you haven't done yet that you'd like to? Um. I suppose most of my time really has been doing period stuff because of Vikings. And while that is super fun and I love, there's such a, I mean, there's so much rich history with period dramas. I mean, you can literally delve into any, you know, era and it's so amazing, but I haven't done a, a ton of like contemporary modern stuff. I think just anything maybe in the modern world for a little bit would be quite nice. I mean, I was literally used to wearing like long dresses, so heavy, like in the mud, all this uncomfortable like hair pieces, like just to wear a pair of jeans and a jumper, you know, <laughs> would be quite nice, you know, <laughs> not asking for too much, but I think it would just be fun to show a very different side of me. So anything, any genre, but maybe in a modern setting would be something I would, sort of aim towards for now, but you never know, as I said, things yeah. might, things might change. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so, um, who inspires you within the, within the industry? I would say, uh, Emma Thompson is she's obviously older, but I'm, I think she's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, the array of characters that she has played is like just astounding. I'm, obsessed with her she's probably my favorite actor and alicia vikander i'm really inspired by her i remember watching her in the royal affair it was like the first thing i'd ever watched her and i'd never heard of her before mm. and she spoke a different language to her like natural mother tongue which i thought was amazing she was sort of 23 i think at that, uh, mm. at that age. and her emotional depth was just unbelievable and i've sort of followed her career all the way through 
and I recently watched Lara Croft and I, obviously everyone has a different opinion on that. She, you know, it's not Angelina Jolie. So, you know, it's a very different thing. And there are loyal fans who feel, you know, a certain way, but she obviously can play such an array of characters. Mm. And, you know, with Lara Croft, for example, I'm so inspired by that because I've always wanted to play a character that I have to get into a like ridiculous shape for. Like that in itself is a huge challenge. And she obviously has been able to do so many of these things. So I would say, she's probably up there with, you know, a huge inspiration. Um, and I like that she keeps her private life private. I think that's really attract an attractive quality as well. So I'd say those two are sort of up there with, with my favorite actors. Awesome, I, I, awesome. I, I quite liked uh, Tomb Raider, I quite liked it. I thought it was so a, did I. I thought it was a really good film. It was different. Film. It was yeah, different. it was. It was, it, was it, it, um, it was inspired by the new new crop of games. It wasn't the like uh, what Angelina Jolie's one was yeah. was more about the uh, the older style. But right. this was like the, the when they rebooted it in the game and right. uh, like did the reimagining. It was yeah. um, like where she's okay. younger and, yeah. and more feral. And yeah. It was really cool. I yeah. liked it. I hope they get a chance to make a sequel, but yeah. because of lockdown, we don't know. So <laughs> because of the virus, yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, um, obviously, we've just entered our entered a second lockdown in the UK. Um, so how has that affected the way you work? Because obviously, you can't be acting as much as you'd like to be. So have you been like pursuing other things? Yeah, obviously, because of lockdown, it's meant that like less productions can go ahead. There aren't as many auditions. So I've just been trying to focus on, you know, things that we can do. I did the full Topshop campaign. So I've done a bit of modeling, which is, I'm not a model, let me just tell you. I'm an actor. Um, but it was amazing to get given the chance. And why not try something else and, you know, see how it goes. And I am an ambassador of a charity called the Lady Garden Foundation, which is all raising awareness for cervical cancers, because I had a, a scare a couple of years ago, which I talk about quite openly. And yeah, just trying to raise, always keep raising money for them, which is really difficult in lockdown, obviously, because they don't get to do their fundraisers and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, just trying to, you know, make a difference where I can. And as I said, you know, lockdowns well it's so hard for everyone but i'm also just been enjoying spending time with my family and friends and my parents which i don't get to you know which i don't get to see all the time so um i've just been trying to keep busy and, and keep positive um what else what have you been doing for the charity well we're doing we have a couple of things coming up um my instagram is g hurst and i'll be posting stuff um, on there when when everything comes about but in the beginning of the year next year we're going to do a virtual cycle so we're going to just try and uh, everyone will try and do a bit of exercise in their homes to raise money um, for research and stuff like that for for this for the um, charity which as I said this year it's been everyone's obviously suffered but this charity particularly is close to my heart so we're going to every year normally we do a run um to raise money but obviously as i said this year it's different so we're gonna we're, we're working basically currently just working on a few strategies to get to get some you know fundraising from home and safely so everyone can you know make a difference without sort of risking their health which is the main thing at the moment yeah absolutely well that's uh, that's got to be quite rewarding and uh, um, for, for yourself to be in, to be involved with that yeah, absolutely. I try to, um, I volunteer. Um, well, I'm current, it's, as I said, literally COVID's just ruined everything, but um, I try and volunteer um, at children's hospitals and stuff like that, which I like to do completely away from social media because, um, you know, you don't want to do a good deed that just looks like a good deed. Um, mm. There's definitely more to life than being on social media and being an actor and all the glitz and the glamour, that's not re really rewarding enough in itself. You know, there's definitely more that I can do. And if I can try and just be a good person and, and make some kind of difference, I think I'll, tr I'll try, you know, if I can, I'll, I'll try and do it. So I'm trying to volunteer at some children's hospitals, but as I said, with COVID, it's a little tricky. So hopefully next year I'll get into some hospitals and just be able to be a spare pair of hands, you know, 
if if I can help in any way. Awesome. Um, so, is there a book that you're a fan of that hasn't been adapted to film or TV on Netflix that you'd love to be a part of? Good question. Um, I read so many books in lockdown. Um, I'd have to think about there is there was a book I was reading over lockdown, which I cannot for the life of me remember, which was all about um, race and just about um, a girl who babysits for a family and she just basically feels prejudiced. And I will try and remember and let you know so you can add this in. Um, but I believe some famous celebrity had bought the rights of that and was making it. But up until then, um, that is something I would love to be involved with because it has a strong message. So I'll, I'll find out and I'll email it to you after this. But um, I'm sure there are lots, but actually you'd be surprised. I often read books and, and I'll say like to my dad, for example, like, oh, this is amazing. Like someone should make this. And dad will be like, someone is. You know, you can't believe how much stuff is actually already being made. I remember reading Gone Girl first and being like, this, this is a film. And everyone was like, it is. I was like, right, okay. So, um, but, I mean, it's hard to wade through the stuff that isn't, you know, being sort of spied on for a movie. But that, mm. there's been a couple of books I read over lockdown, which I was like, this is, this has to be a film. So, yeah, as I said, I'll, I'll, I'll email them to you after this. All right, cool. That's awesome. Um, so, with the popularity of streaming services like a Netflix, uh, what do you think the future of cinema is? Oh, it's, I mean, me personally, I don't go to a lot of movies. Like I would actually choose to watch something on the TV or on my computer, like from the comfort of my own home. My brother is the kind of person who will go to a new Marvel film and, and watch it the first night it comes out and, and like queue at 12 PM, like just to watch it. So it's, I think it kind of depends on the audience and a lot of people want to keep cinema alive and it's so important, but I certainly think you know, like this interactive show, I feel like that's probably realistically the future. It's, it's definitely becoming a craze and everyone's sort of talking about it. And especially as what's going on in the world, us all being stuck at home, we're going to have to start thinking of things to keep us entertained and a way to rejuvenate, you know, film and TV. If it's not going to the cinema, then it's going to have to be something else to keep it interesting and exciting. But I feel like you know, premieres and stuff like that of movies. That's what keeps, that's what, that's kind of part of the magic of making film is imagining seeing it on the big screen. So I do hope that we keep some of the magic of cinema alive, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the interactive path ends up being something that, you know, becomes huge. Yeah, and, and um, Paul's doing a, done quite a few, he's done a couple so far. Yeah. He did the complex recently. Exactly. Uh, that was, a, I think that was in, that was during the first lockdown uh, yeah. that that was done, which is really good as well. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. Uh, spoke to him about that one and spoke to Michelle, uh, who's the lead. Um, so just before you go, um, what are you hoping audience will take away from Five Dates when they get a chance to see it, play it? Yeah, um, good question. I think, um, I think, I, I know anyway, being in lockdown ha has been a depressing time for a lot of people. And I certainly think if you live on your own or you're single, you know, it's a lonely place. I think Five Dates shows that it's, it's okay to to maybe want to meet people over, like online. I definitely think there's a stigma of, of using dating apps and um, you know, meeting people online. It's either like, that's really dangerous or you know, that's a bit desperate or whatever it is, whatever the stigmas are, I think this really opens up the floor and says like, look at all these people from different walks of life that are all doing the same thing. And lockdown is a lonely place. And I think it brings a little bit of light relief to that to the seriousness of it. And as I said, it just shows like, we're all in this together really, and there shouldn't be any judgment. And if you can't go out and meet people right now, which a lot of people can't, I can't tell you how many people, you know, how many people I know and friends are like, I'm on my own and I can't meet someone. Like, I feel depressed. This just shows 
it's normal, it happens, it's not a bad thing. And if it's done safely, you can maybe meet a great match. And, you know, particularly in this game, hopefully it will be grace for you um, mm -hmm. all out there. But listen, I'm going to play it and see what it's like to date myself. And <laughs> give it a while. Awesome. Well, this has been this has been incredible. I've uh, been wanting to speak to you for a while. So, um, yeah, uh, thanks for taking the time. And yeah, good luck with everything. And uh, yeah, the, the film slash game is really good. So enjoy it when you play it. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Have a lovely rest of your day. You too. Take care of yourself. Speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. So let's see how much more there is. If lockdown was a game, you'd be winning it. Callum, do you actually want to date me? Get off. Get off. How do I hang this up? Get off. the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.